Do you have what it takes to successfully convert compound formulas into names? Find out on this episode of the Atomic Game Show. It's... Chemistry Talk with Dan is proud to present the Atomic Game Show. Here's your master of ceremonies, Not Dan! Well, hey, hey, I am Not Dan, so let's get to it, shall we? Alright, so our first one here is MGBR2. So let's go through our naming tree. First one is, is the first element a metal? Well, this is magnesium, it is definitely a metal. So the next question we ask is, is it a transition metal? And the answer is, no it is not, it is in group 2A. So we're just simply going to write the name as we see it. MG is magnesium. And BR is bromine. And since it's not a polyatomic ion, we're gonna change the ending to IDE. So bromide, right? Magnesium bromide. All right, next one, N2F4. Is the first element a metal? Well, N is nitrogen, which is a non-metal. So therefore, this is a covalent compound. And here we're going to use, that's right, prefixes. All right, so since our subscript here is two, that means di, so we're going to do di nitrogen. And then four is tetra, so tetra fluoride. Di nitrogen tetrafluoride. All right, next one. Fe CO3 is the first element a metal. Well, iron is definitely a metal. And is it a transition metal? Yes, it is, which means we need to use the uh, the Roman numerals. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the name as I see it, leaving a space for the Roman numerals. So Fe is iron. I'm going to put a set of parentheses to fill in a Roman numeral later. And then CO3 is one of those polytonics that you guys got to remember. CO3 is carbonate. Here we go. Iron something carbonate. How do we figure it out? We're going to figure it out by looking at our negative ion. Carbonate has a charge of negative two, so in order to balance that out, iron here must be positive two. So this is iron two carbonate. All right, next one. Very similar uh, elements here, but we got different subscripts, so something different is going on here. All right, so it's still iron, right? Iron something carbonate. But this time, since carbonate here is negative two, and there's three of them, so that makes a charge of negative six. So in order to balance that out, iron here must be positive six, but since there are two of them, six divided by two is positive three. This is iron three carbonate. All right, check it out, a couple more to go. Here we go, CCl4. Is the first element a metal? Well, carbon is a non-metal, so therefore this is going to be a, another covalent. And our subscript here is one, but remember we don't put mono on the first name, so we're going to write carbon. And four is tetra, so tetra chloride. Just like that. All right, and next one, CRI3. CR is chromium, which is a metal and a transition metal, so we need, that's right, Roman numerals. So I'm gonna put chromium here, set of parentheses. I is iodine, which I'm going to change to iodide. Now I gotta figure out the Roman numeral, starting with iodine, which is in group seven, so it has a charge of negative one. And since there are three of them there, that's an overall charge of negative three. So chromium must be positive three in order to balance that out. This is chromium three iodide. Very good, one more example, K3PO4. The first element is potassium, which is a metal, but it is not a transition metal, so I'm just gonna write the name as I see it. So K is potassium, and PO4 is another one of those polyatomic ions. It is phosphate, and since it's a polyatomic, I'm not going to change the name. It's just phosphate, potassium, Phosphate. And there you go. Thank you so much for playing this episode of the Atomic Game Show. If you have any further questions, be sure to comment below. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Slide your mind.